Welcome to the Ultra Street Fighter 4 World Warriors of Capcom Cup Player Series Showcase. I'm Ultra David. And I'm James Chen. Um, this is a video series where we talk about uh, all of the qualifiers for Capcom Cup in uh, 2014. That's going to be taking place on December 13th at the Warfield in San Francisco. 16 players are going to be making it to this event. And uh, if you can't be there live, you can also watch on twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters. That's right, and there are a couple of different ways to qualify for Capcom Cup. One is by winning one of 10 automatic qualifying major tournaments. Mm -hmm. The other way is by uh, garnering points. So at all of the big tournaments that have happened over the year, not just those 10, uh, points have been given out to the people who do well. Yes. The six people who have gotten the most points doing well at these tournaments uh, will also qualify. Yep. And today we're talking about one of those players. Yep, Ricky Ortiz uh, was one of the qualifiers, Ricky Ortiz from Team EG. Mm -hmm. And she qualified, I believe, fourth most in points. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, and Ricky is just one of those players that has been in the scene pretty much like forever. She's. I, I mean, it's 15 years, something like that. Yeah. I mean, if there was a major event that took place in the FGC, you know, very likely she was a large part of it. Yeah. And she's still really, I mean, that's the amazing thing is that how strong she still is at this. Like if you remember one of the very first times US and Japan played each other when the, the, the players from US traveled over to Japan and played them over there. Ricky was part of that group over there. Right. And that was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And here she is. And, and right now, honestly, uh, it, within North America, I would say she's top three. In For sure, fighter. I would say top three. I think a lot of people would say top two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, but dominance for Ricky goes back you know, all, all of that, all that time. Yeah. Um, dominant in Marvel 2 at the start. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's kind of been lost to history if you, if you weren't around <laughs> at the time. Ricky as a top Marvel player, but that's, yeah. that was accurate. Yeah, and in fact, you know, just to, just to talk a little bit about that. Um, so she lived in Northern California for a while, and then she moved to the East Coast. So she moved to New York right. and became kind of known as one of the East Coast players who trained along with Eddie Lee and Arturo Sanchez and Justin Wong. Right. And when Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was first out, this was still during a period where West Coast thought that they were the best in every game, right? And um, Ricky came out to a Southern Hills Golfland tournament, and this is a time when Alex Vai was the best player in Marvel. This is in Southern California. Yeah, in Southern California. And uh, she came out here, and everyone was confident that uh, the West Coast was going to win. But Ricky, in grand finals, defeated Alex Vai in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and it kind of started ushering in the, the East Coast Marvel dominance. It was a sign, hmm. uh, you know, that just it basically, I mean, at this point in time, it's, it's not even debatable that East Coast has the best Marvel versus Capcom 2 players. And that was kind of where it started. Ricky was the one who ushered that in. So. Ricky and Alex Valle, Grand Finals of Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> now it sounds weird, but the time, <laughs> time that, that was it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's not just Marvel, but also Third Strike. She was one of the best Third Strike mm -hmm. players in the country, very solid Chun, very solid Ken, one of the best with both. Yeah, and, and in CVS2, uh, also one of the all-time best, um, not just in the States, I think, but, but internationally, had, had so much success at EVO, for example. There were a good three or four years there where Ricky ended up uh, right at the very top. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure Ricky got t like second place uh, uh, more than one year, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, she always used to joke that she had this curse that, you know, she always dropped the combo that would win, <laughs> win the, the, yeah. the actual tournament. But, you know, she's gotten second place twice in that. And then, of course, in Street Fighter Four as well. So. Yeah, her SF4 career didn't start right at the start. Mm -hmm. um, I think she took about a year to get into it. But after she did, of course, so talented, got into it. Um, a lot of success. Mostly been with Rufus. Uh, there was a period of time when she played Chun, but since then it's really just been Rufus. And Rufus is her favorite character in oh, the series. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh. So, so when, when we talk about her, her style, so her, her style, maybe not the best fit with Rufus. At, you know, that's not, maybe not what you would imme immediately think, but right. her success is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like we said, second place to Daigo in 2010. You know, and... and since then, she's always been at the top. And like I said top earlier... Top eight this yeah, year at Evo. Yeah, and like I said, I, I really honestly feel like she is, you know, potentially top three, top two in, in the game. So, in, in Street Fighter Four right now. Um, 
I, I want to talk about her defense. Defense yeah. is, is extremely solid. Um, it's, it's always been great. Mm. Uh, she also has, uh, in my opinion, um, one of the best footsie games in the world. I, I, think, I think it's reasonable to say that she has top five footsies in the world. Spacing game, uh, just in, in general. The, the interesting thing, though, about the way that she uses Rufus uh, with that spacing game is that it's not like she's walking around with stand medium kick and, mm -hmm. and sweep all the time. I mean, if she needs to, then okay. But really what she's doing is placing dive kicks exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, it's, it's been such a long trend because in CVS2, her reputation was so much based on defense, on, on the spacing and the yeah. footsies and everything. She's just taken that, carried it over. You know, I swear she's counting pixels on screen. You know, I mean, honestly, it feels like she knows exactly this since probably maybe one of the top five, yeah, like you said, top five players of spacing in, in the world at yeah. this point. So. Yeah. Uh, another cool thing about Ricky that I always like watching her for is that there are these moments when she gets mad. She gets a little <laughs> bit angry, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And when she is mad, when she, when she has to turn it on like that, yeah, yeah. No, nobody's beating her. I, I, re <laughs> I really think that she becomes the best when yeah. that happens. I mean, there are a lot of players out there that when they get angry, you can tell that's where you can go in for the kill. Because most yeah. people get worse when they get angry. But right. I remember there was one tournament where um, I think she lost to an able and then just like was so frustrated because that matchup was kind of, it was one of the, it was during Super where Abel was really strong. Okay. And she just said no, and two Abels in a row just like took him out with like near perfects. Yeah, I, I've, seen her, I've seen her do that at a few tournaments. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's, it's happened several times. Not all the time, <laughs> but there are these moments where yeah. you don't know when it's coming, but she can just be unbeatable. Yeah, and also one other trait that I really enjoy watching Ricky when, when she's actually at when we're actually at the event mm. is how she reacts to her opponent actually there. <laughs> ah, yeah. Because in between matches, I feel like she like glances over at. Uh, we talk about this a lot on commentary, but she looks in between matches. But, but, but here's the funny thing: she's not going like this. Uh -huh. She's like this. And she she cast the eyes to the yeah, side yeah, like yeah, this yeah. a little uh -huh. bit just <laughs> because it's it's great because if you can catch the exasperation or yeah. the anger or a little bit of the frustration or the doubt that gives you a lot of information and and you know that's part of the game that's why we play here at live events is because sure. that physical presence being there in the spot at the time feeling the pressure is a hundred percent part of the game and Ricky is one of the people who really plays that the best. And then the, the last thing that I think I want to bring up when it comes to her play style is reactions. <laughs> yeah. I, there are not many people in the world who I think can outreact Ricky. I yeah. mean, I remember hearing tales of, of Ricky playing little, um, little like phone games against her friends where the goal was to, who can react first? <laughs> a, little, a little like light shows up and both uh -huh. people are trying to, th okay, who presses it first? And nobody can beat her. <laughs> Well, we're, we're going to see a lot of that. So, I mean, it's going to be uh, very... We're going to watch a match here. And this is yep. the match that, um, against Sako mm -hmm. at Evolution in top eight. This past year. Yeah, and Sako had a lot of, lot of fans, you know. Obviously, a lot of people like watching Sako. And yeah. when they saw Sako going up against Ricky, I bet you a lot of people were, you know, considering that it was going to be a pretty standard win for Sako. But uh, Ricky kind of played spoiler here at this event. So. All right, well, let's get into it. All right. And immediately what you're going to see is Ricky's play style, very aggressive. Very aggressive, uh, likes to stay in your face. But again, you can see this distance already, kind of walking back and forth at the right distances. But a good read there from Sako. Oh, and Sako dropped a combo. Yeah, see, followed that, up right in there. But see, that was a great reaction right there. Mm -hmm, Dive sure. kick, saw the back dash, knew it was going to whiff, and immediately went, you know, started hitting buttons as soon as the dive kick landed. Oh, nice. Gets the punish there. Minus four. Ooh. Oh. Double dive kick, double dive kick. That's actually something that we see Ricky do a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, that's an early lesson for Ricky that she really picks up on that um, is tough, I guess, for Sako to deal with. You know, she, she really makes good use of that. Well, we'll see that coming up. Now, of course, keep in mind, this is kind of a, an interesting matchup because Evil Ryu has some very 
character specific combos on on Rufus yeah. where Evil Ryu can go for very long periods of time <laughs> with the combo but Ricky not scared and as we said s super loyal to Rufus yeah very loyal to this character and see there it Look is at that oh, spot yeah perfect distancing on that dive kick and knew that she was in gonna be a disadvantage when she landed just blocked mm -hmm. and now here we go look at this look at this poking from the standing forward Doing a great job but here comes Evil Ryu, ah, the damage. Nice throw tech, wow. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that should be it right there. Sako, of course, known for having Sako combos in a couple of games. <laughs> he literally has a combo named after him because nobody else can do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there was that whiff Perfect dive kick. Spot. Yeah, yeah just... whiff dive kick in the throw, so good. Ooh. Now, what, another thing that Ricky does a lot in this set is crouching strong early when Evil Ryu is jumping. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see it again. I'll, I'll point it out. Ooh, that didn't even combo. But nice throw. And see, this is what I mean. This is, this is the really yeah, aggressive style. Yeah. Kick. Ricky has such a good read in those moments. Whenever you're scared to block or you're, you tend to crouch tech, she does instant dive kick. Mm -hmm. So we're in the so in the same moments where everybody else, you know, would do something defensive, she goes right on the offense with the instant air dive kick. She's really good at finding those moments. Ooh. Ooh. Uh oh. Pretty rare. Yeah. But nice recovery by Sako. Yeah, ah, nice. Just yeah. again, exactly spaced. I mean, it could be an option select, maybe dive kick, throw, and then attack. But I, honestly, I don't think that's what Ricky's doing because I don't see Ricky do a lot of option selects. Very rare. Ricky is a, another one of those very emotion-based players, very based on reads and, uh, and, and psychology and understanding what the opponent wants to do. She's not one to uh, rely a lot on shenanigans at all. In fact, you very rarely see her use shenanigans. Nice. Getting into the corner now. Oh, ooh, okay, and uh, dropped combos. Yeah, there's that early crouching strong. So if Evil Ryu does a jump roundhouse, it anti-airs. But if he does a dive kick to delay it a little bit, Ricky's actually blocking already by the time that dive kick hits. So I, I really like that. Huh. Interesting, okay. Yeah, because I mean, most of the time you can, if you, that little dive kick delay is designed specifically to stop normal move anti-airs. Right. But not in this case. Yeah, but it seems like if uh, if she times it right, then yeah, it doesn't work at all. Okay. Oh wow. Oh, not a reversal. Nice delay on that. Yeah, I, I per perfectly timed. Ooh. Hmm. Strange that they didn't combo. That wasn't a combo either. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Yeah. That whiff dive kick into throw is seems like such a important thing for her. And there it was, that crowd strong beat right? it. You saw how early it hit him out, uh, hit, hit Evil Ryu out of the air. It has a better hitbox than it looks like, and it's, it was because of that that kept Sako in the corner. Now Ricky mm -hmm. gets the pressure. Wow, he actually went for the throw tech. Oh. Oh. Yeah, when, when it comes down to getting that last hit, I feel like Ricky is really good at that. Mm -hmm. Because she can just put herself at this exact spot on screen and, and press buttons at a range that she knows it's good. Wow. In the meantime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely get more loops on Rufus with Evil Ryu. Oh, there we go. Good throw. And Ricky's also really good at mixing up throw and not throw. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a basic mix-up, obviously, but I feel like Ricky just does it really well. <laughs> oh, that's standing forward. She uses that button so good. Yeah, it's a nice buff for Rufus. Yeah. But even in AE 2012, when it wasn't as good, she was still really, really good at using that button. And she was pushed out a little bit there, but then almost immediately gets right back to that spot right there mm -hmm. where she can do an instant, or where she can jump and then dive kick on reaction to a fireball, or, or not, if not. It's a very strong spot for Rufus. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, a lot of times most people use instant air dive kick or just dive kick as a form of attack. Ricky actually just uses it as a way to move. Yeah, it's a mobility tool. Yeah, so it's really smart. And, and, and it's a threat, too. You see that? Oh, oh wow. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Oh, oh beautiful. That dot, the delay on that dive. We talked about how you changed the jump arc. I love the little raise the Rufus right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By Ricky. Yeah, <laughs> you don't see a player do it. Okay. Oh, there you yeah. go. Okay, that's it right there. But yeah. yeah, that was a huge comeback. 
You yeah. saw that totally looked like that was Sako's round. That that was Sako's game, and that was a huge difference because that was the difference between one one or two zero. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah. So now first of three, Sako is on the ropes at this point in time. So let's right. see if Ricky can uh, close this out here. Well, we already spoiled it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're probably not picking a match where Ricky loses. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's there awesome. it is. That cra early. That's so strong. good. That's so good. Okay. Little mini vortex from Evil Ryu. I, I really like too that Ricky has almost kind of forced Sako into mounting that pressure because the normal Ryu zoning just isn't working that well. Ricky is is solving it. Yeah, and see, I, I think one of the reasons why Ricky's throw game is so strong is because he does because she does have that instant air dive kick. Yeah, you know, to, to mix it up, so you get a little bit scared of that. And you notice that every time she goes for the throw, she kind of twitches a little bit <laughs> with R Rufus, and it's such a good. That's a really strong thing to do. Is the oh nice. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah, should be the round. Yeah. But if you do that little twitch, it looks like you're either trying to go for a crouch short or you're starting to do an instant air dive kick. So yeah. yeah. Really, really good technique to implement. Ooh. Yeah. Oh see that time she did the twitch into instant air dive kick. So good. Oh wow, just going in there for frame trap wow. and now it gets the stun. stun. Not going to want to use any meter here because only the first round and such a huge... Oh. That frame shot, by the way, second time that she had tried it in just that round, and this, this time it did work. You don't usually see Rufus's go for that frame trap. With well, standing fierce, well, yeah. That's uh -huh. I do, with standing fierce. Uh, yeah, I like it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so it, it definitely seems like it's more profitable for Sako to actually try to go in, which I, I think is almost a success story for Ricky mm -hmm. uh, because she, she's made it to that... Sako can't do the normal right, but stay away. Wow. Here we okay, go. Sako time. This. It's Sako time. Watch the show. <laughs> that setup would have thrown everybody. <laughs> except, except for Ricky. <laughs> and, uh, ending a combo with an EX fireball that doesn't knock down so you can go in for the throw would have worked on everybody. Everybody. And I wonder if that's prediction or reactions. Like I said, I think that her reactions are amazing, so yeah, I wouldn't yeah. wouldn't put it past it just being that. Oh, again, that throw or instant air dive kick game so potent. Oh, and that time, yeah. See, always doing that little twitch yeah. right beforehand, and it's it's just a way to mask what it is that you're doing. So good. But this is this is evil Ryu. That's the kind of damage that evil Ryu can dish out and gets right. the stun right into Ultra. And a very damaging ultra. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look like it might not kill, but nope, it does. Yeah, it seems like it always <laughs> does. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice animation, though. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It's one of the better ones. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so Ricky now losing a little bit of momentum here. Let's see if she can get it back again. Lots of neutral jumps to fake the dive kick. Mm -hmm. So that's another part of that gameplay. Big so, tool. Yeah, you can see how she has two very distinct games. The get-in game, and then once up close, there's this, this game that she concentrates on uh, with the, you know, the little twitches and the instant air dive kick, stand fierce with throws. And we saw a Wake Up EX Messiah. We don't see that too often in this set, but I, I also think that it's sort of a, a hallmark of her game that she's willing to do those EX Messiahs in situations where a lot of other Rufuses won't. When she doesn't have three bars, mm -hmm. she just has one. And she, she seems to do it, you know, she does it at the right times, okay? It's not yeah, random, yeah, yeah. it's, not, it's uh -huh. not crazy. But she seems to do it more often than other Rufus's. Yeah, because she knows that other people are thinking, oh, you, don't, you can't FADC it, so obviously you're not going to do it. Ooh. Oh, wow, look at this. Good pressure. Oh, wow. stunned. Yeah, things are, everything is going Ricky's way now. Yep. Yep, oh, there it is. There it is, and Ricky... Ortiz, yeah. I, I, I love the way that she closed it out right there. She went for the grab after the dive kick after so many blown up crouch techs. Yeah. With mm -hmm. dive kick into dive kick or into uh, or instant dive kick as almost a meaty. Mm -hmm. Blew up so many crouch techs from Sako and then closes it out with a nice little throw. Yeah, you almost feel nice like that was what she was going to do on hit or block. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. She yeah, was yeah. just going to dive yeah. kick into throw. For sure. The dive kick hit. 
And but then yeah. she got the throw anyway. That was, so. that was the plan. I mean, she she had no she knew that <laughs> that uh, Sako was probably not going to crouch tech. He's right, been blown right. up by mm -hmm. that so many times. So yeah. Again, very nice mix. Up again, again, playing spoiler in that kind of situation. Remember, Sako won Capcom Cup in 2013, just last year, yeah. uh, won't be there to defend his title. You know, he has a new member of the family, so, you know. That's true, although he's still very strong. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's uh, still but, amazing. But Ricky um, ended up getting, I think, fifth yes. at EVO. Um, uh -huh. You know, she hasn't been to that many things since then, although when she has, she's gotten second at a couple of things. Mm -hmm. she, she dominated the NorCal Fight Night uh, League, yeah, if you recall, right, yeah. just complete mm -hmm. destruction of the scene up there. Um, so I, I do think that you're right when we were talking earlier that she is for sure top three in the U.S. right now. Um, a lot of people would say top two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Right and up at the top. I, you know, scary, per, scary, very, very scary opponent to come up against. Yeah. Because she has the ability to overwhelm you very, very quickly. Yeah. And because... Her spacing is so good, it's really hard to impose your game onto Ricky. Mm. And, you know, I just I just feel like Ricky's one of those people that you just don't want to run into at Capcom Cup this year. Look, if, if you have spacing like that and reactions like that, you can really shut down the opponent. Mm. It's really tough to, to deal with. And I, I, I think you're absolutely right. She's, she's one of the, the scarier players there. Yeah. I mean, granted, all 16 of these players, no lie, are, are, are scary. We'll probably say that every time. <laughs> <laughs> in all of these videos. Yeah, but I mean, there's just something about Ricky. You know, a lot of players that you can study and find their patterns and kind of learn stuff about, I just don't feel like that's as easy to do with Ricky because Ricky's game is just really solid. Very, right. very, very solid. And like we said, she's been doing this for years and years and years now. So she, she as soon as she came onto the scene, she was one of the best players, like right away. And never never dropped never stopped so i mean you know it's one of those situations where honestly i believe if there was no justin wong then ricky would have been the justin wong you know i uh, can totally see that I, I honestly feel that way that wouldn't surprise me at all <laughs> yeah because yeah. i mean she was so dominating in pretty much everything that she played so yeah. so capcom cup is going to be december 13th 2014 in San Francisco, California at the Warfield. Mm -hmm. Great venue. I've been yes. there a couple of times. Nice. Very nice. Happy to see a, a big fighting game event there. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So, but uh, if you guys can't make it, um, subscribe and tune in uh, to twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters. Yeah. Um, like I said, subscribe or follow, you know, follow so you'll get the notification when the event goes live, because trust me, you are not going to want to miss this. Again, 16 <laughs> scariest players in the world uh, at this event. It's going to be so much fun. And if you like this kind of video where we analyze a match and we talk about play style and we try to get you know all the little interesting mm -hmm. nuggets out, out of a video that, that we can, head over to our channel, which is youtube.com slash TV, and uh, the live one is twitch.tv slash ultra chen tv yeah we definitely try to capture all different levels you know we have shows for beginners we have shows for you know pro people trying to get into the pro circuit and then we also talk a lot about things that are just going on in the fighting game community all the new games and information and recapping events and such like that so yeah. Yeah. all right thanks a lot for joining us we'll see you at capcom cup